Good morning. We're on uh, part number four of our series on unity and harmony among God's people. Uh, last week we learned about the importance of elevating Christ and others above ourselves, uh, which humility is what enables us to do that. And we, we also learned that in our humility, the moment that we think we have it, we lose it. Um, as I learned last night, um, in fellowshipping with some men of the church, um, plain text to them, um, I was in, I gave more than I, yeah, I, I gave a lot more, uh, not in financial means, but in chips that were worthless. Um, so I think I helped, I helped Mike win, right? So half my chips went to Mike. Yeah, so it helped him. So in the spirit of elevating others before ourselves, that's, that was my lesson last night. Um, today we're going to talk about interceding. And with humility uh, as a part of our equipment, we're able to intercede for one another in prayer. Um, but before Dave plays a video on prayer, just to get our, our thoughts going, uh, I've had so many people ask me about my finger. And just so you know, if you see tape, if you see braces, if you see crutches, it's basketball. Okay, that's just bottom line. Um, yeah, he tells me every Sunday, don't go, don't go, uh, because we're afraid what that doctor bill will be. Um, but the funny thing about it, uh, Dave Eckerty said that it's tape so I can point today. <laughs> but he said, remember, Dave, uh, even though you're pointing with one, you have three more pointing back at you. So thank you for that lesson, Dave. I appreciate it. Uh, if you would play the video. What a what a neat video! And you know what's funny is that that video reminded me I forgot the Lord's Prayer <laughs> at the end. So I apologize. Well, that's neat. All right, back on track. the The reason why I chose this video is that it, it's all about our our motive and our intention in prayer, um, rather than the act of doing it. Uh, and it especially rings through when we are praying for others. 
Okay, so if we're praying for others to get gain for ourselves, then it's not really interceding. So let's take a look first at the word intercede and the definition. The definition is interposing or pleading on behalf of another person. Uh, another definition is a prayer offered up to God on behalf of another. But uh, intercession also has another dimension to it uh, from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, the word inter- intercession denotes a approach to God in a confident and familiar prayer. Uh, even though one may be speaking to God on behalf of another, let's take a look at the tone in which Moses is speaking. And I, she did such a great job reading that scripture. I'm only going to read two verses over again, uh, which is in Exodus 32, where Moses is interceding on behalf of Israel. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. When we read it like that, we can see Moses interceding for those people. Um, and there's reason. Moses understood the spiritual aspect, but the people didn't. All they saw was the physical. Um, so Moses, caring for his people as any leader that God puts in charge, should intercede. So with intercessory prayer on our minds today, interceding for people, we're going to take a look at some objects of intercessory prayer. And the first one um, I may have some people talking to me afterwards, uh, correcting me, but it's fine. Um, physical and material needs of others. All right? This is where 97% of our prayers are spent. And that's my number, not, not facts. Okay, that's 97% of our prayers are spent in the physical and material needs of needing a new car or a new job or um, praying for someone who's sick or has uh, a long-term illness or we can think of a number of things, okay? But prayer is spiritual, okay? And when I look at the physical and material needs of others, I, I don't find a scriptural basis, okay? But that's me personally, all right? Because the physical and the material comes from the spiritual. And that's what we must understand. We must put the spiritual aspect first, and that will take care of the material and physical needs. So let's move on to the the spiritual needs of others and the needs of new converts. Basically, what we're going to do today, I'm going to share a bunch of scripture with you, okay, and read some of it. It's just going to be an overview of this intercessory prayer. So Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, talks. it says, For God to give, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Number two, or in, these, in that one aspect is three or four points. Having the eyes of our hearts enlightened. Okay? Know what the hope in which He called us is. Know what the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints is. Know what the immeasurable greatness of His power towards those who believe. And I think we forget this sometimes. How powerful we truly are as believers in Christ because of His immeasurable greatness, not our own. Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. I'm going to read this one. And this one deals specifically with spiritual strength, which is key. We tend to rely on our own strength and our own power, but that strength is only possible through the spiritual strength that God gives us. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. All of us in this room can think of a time when our strength ran out. 
and we had to rely on God's strength. We can all think of a time when our resolve, our strength failed. The only thing that got us through that time was leaning on God's immeasurable strength. Okay? Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. That's a, that our love may abound more and more with knowledge in all discernment. Be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Be filled with the fruit of the, or the fruit of righteousness to glorify God and to be worthy of His praises. These are all spiritual prayers. I, I have one more. Colossians chapter one verses three through thirteen. To be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. Imagine how many mistakes we could avoid in our life if we had that understanding. Oh my. I could have saved about 20 years uh, knowing what God's will for my life was if I was actually speaking at the time. Man. To walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, all of us should be praying for one another in that regard. To be fully pleasing to Him, another aspect. Bearing fruit in every good work. And as Patty has hit me up about every week since um, I've been here, she wants the pruning message <laughs> from I am the true vine. But for us to bear fruit in every good work is the opposite of not bearing fruit, which we all know what happens to that branch in that sermon. It gets cut off and thrown away. To increase in the knowledge of God, not for our own glory, but for His. It's one thing to know the Bible front and back, but if, if our heart's not in it, if we're not living it, it means nothing. Um, an example, I, I know a kid that is amazing at memorizing verses. All right? Amazing. I've, I've never seen anyone memorize verses like him. And it's, it's amazing how in any case um, or topic he can just reproduce that verse. But he doesn't live it. Okay? It's a contradiction. To the Word. To have that knowledge inside of us and not to live it. To be strengthened with all power and according to His glorious might for all endurance and for joyful patience. This is something that as unity and harmony, you know, as coming together as one body, we need to remember that we need to be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might so that we may endure together. Okay? We may endure not only just endure, but joyfully endure, despite our circumstances. The next object is the ministry needs of others, so pastors, teachers, evangelists, missionaries in the body. So Romans chapter 15, verses 30 through 32, says, For their service to God and His people is acceptable. So, we are to pray for people like myself and our teachers, that our service to God is acceptable. The main reason is that if it's not acceptable, then I'm hindering God's Word. Please, please challenge me and please correct me in that case. Not only being the service to God being acceptable, um, but these teachers, these pastors, these missionaries, that they can be joyful in service. Very important. If we're not joyful, what does it do? Contradicts the message. <laughs> if we're fresh, another good one. If we're not refreshed, I guarantee you that we'll contradict the, we'll contradict the message. Ephesians 6, verses 18 through 20. That words may be given to their mouth to boldly pro proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Glenn, thank you for your prayer a lot of Sundays where you're saying, please give Dave the words to say because if they're my words, they, they will return void. Okay? If they're God's words, they won't. Thank you. And that's what we should be doing. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1-2. through two. The Word of God may speed ahead and be honored and then to be delivered from wicked and evil men. Um... I have a missionary couple friend that they're, they've been in Mexico for I don't know how long. Okay, so every time that they fly from the United States to Mexico and then take a car to their place in the mountain where they've established a church, they go on one of the most dangerous roads you could ever think of. 
It makes East St. Louis and Detroit look like a playground. Um, so every time that they travel on that road, they ask for prayers for safety. They travel to be protected from wicked and evil men. But that's not just it. Um, there's wicked and evil men the moment that we step outside these doors. Okay? It's not just for missionaries. It's for teachers and preachers and even the body. That the Word of God will not be hindered by those who wish to squash it. The next object is for our enemies. Oh, man. That's tough. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I love when the Word of God just says something and, you know, our response is, well, that's easier said than done. Okay? That's easy for you, Lord. You're perfect. Some examples. And I... Luke chapter 23, verse 24, Jesus dying on the cross where He says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Alright, words hurt. We can all agree to that. Words hurt. But think about this. They spit on Jesus' face. They whipped him with, and I can't think of the word, but it, it was horrible. It had like <laughs> uh, flawed, flawed, all right? So, which was grievous. They crucified him to a cross, called him all sorts of names, and he prayed for them. And we, we get them out of shape when the mere words are said. Or uh, when someone makes me look bad on a basketball floor because I'm old. I pray for them. I'm kidding. All right. Acts chapter 7, verse 6. Uh, Stephen being stoned. He says, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And he's being persecuted by those who know God's word front and back. But he's stoning them. And he prays for them, interceding for them. So why pray for our enemies? Simple, simple reason. It's impossible to hold a grudge. It's impossible to have any hatred. It's impossible to have any resentment or anger towards anyone that we pray for. It's impossible. Try it. It'll, huh, it'll humble you. Yeah, because it's humbled me. Time and time again. Something that I'm still learning and still trying to work towards. The next next object is rulers and all people in authority. First uh, Timothy chapter two verses one through two says, "Entry these prayers, petitions, thanksgivings be made on behalf of kings and all who are in authority." So we can translate that to President of the United States, despite what we think of him. We should be praying for him. We can translate it into all local, state, national, world leaders. Despite what we think of them, we should be praying for them because their decisions affect us greatly. But that's not all. We should be praying for our kids' school teachers and our bosses. Oh, those are, those are the words, right? Our policemen, right? And women. The reason why we should pray for them, uh, verses 2 to 3 gives us the answer, is so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and in, in, in all dignity. So the best way that I can put this is the reason why we're supposed to pray for these people where things are out of our control and they're making decisions. We could put Facebook out of business. You know that? If we just prayed for our leaders, we would have nothing to say about their influence in our world if we just prayed for them. Well, maybe a few things. I'm not sure we can find something, but um, it would put Facebook out of business, at least in that regard. Another reason is that it is good and acceptable in the sight of God to pray for those people. The next one in my favorite is family. Okay? Family. Parents, pray for your children. It's very important. Children, please pray for us. Oh my gosh. We make mistakes as parents. If, well, some do, I guess. <laughs> I know I do. Oh, goodness. 
My son's three, and I tell him, please pray for daddy. Husbands, pray for your wives. Wives, pray for your husbands. And again, we really make mistakes as husbands. I'm not going to speak for wives because I go home to one. So I'm not going to do that. But time and time again, the reason why we should do this, time and time again, people bear testimony of their salvation due to the result of a family member praying for that child. They remember it. I remember my grandmother praying for me and teaching me how to pray when I wasn't even going to church as a kid. You know, I, my grandma means the world to me because of that. She saw the need of a kid who was not being church and train him in the Lord, even though I didn't listen, of course. You know, that's just a kid. But I'm so glad she did that. The next object is the unsaved. Uh, examples that God will remove specific hindrances to why they're not hearing the Word of God or the Gospel message. That the Gospel will be presented to and heard by the individual. That the Word of God will work in their hearts because we all know that the same message has different timing in each and every person. There's not a, a slot right here that goes, every person comes to know the Lord here. Okay? People at 40, people at 7. I've, I've heard someone tell me as early as 3 they came to know the Lord. They just knew that God was, their life was given to God at that point. Who am I to judge? Okay? I know I wasn't at three. Uh, I was a horrible kid. Um, I can think back and know when I heard the gospel message at the age of 12 and come and sing the prayer and, and giving my life to Christ. But then I fell away. And it took 16 years later for that message to really take root. And that makes me think about the timing. Um, that the Word of God will work in their hearts. Very important. That God will draw him and her to Christ, which is John chapter 6, verse 44. And my favorite, that God may be visibly seen, heard, and thought of first in every wonder, miracle, event, and in all creation. That those who don't know him, that those that don't know they need him, will see him in everything around them. It's very important. Lastly, uh, we need to pray for all men and women. Uh, there is room for general prayer. Uh, 1 Timothy verse two, or chapter 2, verse 1. There's some times where God just knows our hearts. We don't have to say the person's name. We don't have to lift up the concern. He knows our hearts better than we do. And I've said that time and time again. As we're going through the confirmation class with four amazing young men, um, I'm trying to teach them that... In prayer, it's the fact that we're willing to pray. Okay? We're going to stumble. We're going to mess up from time to time. But He knows exactly what you're thinking. He knows exactly what to lift up and what to receive. In closing, I'd like to recap these objects real quick, uh, which is material and physical needs of others, which I've established in my opinion should be 3% of our prayers, not 97. The spiritual needs of others and new converts, ministry needs of pastors, teachers, missionaries, evangelists, and the body, our enemies, the tough one. Rulers and all people in authority, family, the unsaved, and all men and women and children in general prayer. So, the question comes, so what do our personal prayers and our prayers as one body reflect? Are we 97% material and physical and 3% spiritual? If so, remember that it is our lack of spiritual faith that limits God. And please remember that. It's us who limits God in this regard. We will rarely see God's provision in our material and physical needs. And um, not that we shouldn't pray for them. I, I think we should always pray for those who are sick 
and those who have long-term illness. But we need to elevate the spiritual things first, as I said. One thing I've realized in, in 37 years is that when I was praying for physical and spiritual, or physical and material things, I rarely saw God's provision. Okay? I had so many more disappointments and letdowns with those prayers than praying the spiritual prayers where I could see His fruit and I could see His efforts within people, within um, events and scenarios. I want to challenge this body. Let's begin praying for spiritual needs 97% of the time. And watch God reveal His perfect will for us and His perfect ministry for the church. Then and only then will that visible fruit be there. We will see it more often in the spiritual realm. One thing I want us to remember today, and then we'll close, is remember it is us who limits God. It's us. It's our level of faith in which we pray. It's the items that we offer up to Him that limit the fruit of what He returns. So despite our limited faith, pray for one another, our leaders, and this church without ceasing. With interceding, and I know it was a tough one just going through a lot of Scripture, uh, with interceding dealt with, I'd like for us next week to take a look at the Lord's table um, as communion is next Sunday, if I'm correct. Uh, the five weeks in January is probably throwing me off. So there's a reason for looking at communion. Um, it's what keeps a unified and harmonious body if we take a look at the aspects and follow them. If you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for... Um, your message on interceding, uh, Lord. Thank you for the example. Once we have humility as a part of our uh, equipment, that we're able to elevate you and elevate others before ourselves. Lord, let us be a body who thinks of others before ourselves. Let us be a body who sees the needs of others. Lord, use our hands, our feet, to serve you in meeting those needs, despite our comfort level, Lord. Use us. Use us for your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. And we'll sing hymn number 433, and it should be on the board.
grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love to all of you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.